गुड आफ्टरनून दिस इज आकाशवाणी एंड आई एम अनुभा रोहत की विद मिड डे न्यूज द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेन्द्र मोदी डेडिकेट्स वन लाख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड प्रधानमंत्री किसान समृद्धि केन्द्र टू द नेशन एट सीकर इन राजस्थान सेस सिटी लाइक फैसिलिटीज आर बींग ऑर्गनाइज इन विलेजेस फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमन सेज गवर्नमेंट विल कंसिडर प्रोडक्शन लिंक्ड इंसेंटिव फॉर केमिकल्स एंड पेट्रोकेमिकल सेक्टर टू मेक इंडिया अ मैन्यूफैक्चरिंग हब पार्लियामेंट्री अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर प्रहलाद जोशी सेज ऑपोजिशन इज डिवाइडेड ऑन नो कॉन्फिडेंस मोशन एंड देर इज नो कंसेंसस अमंग दैम बोथ हाउसेज ऑफ पार्लियामेंट आर जर्न टिल टू पी एम अमिट प्रोटेस्ट बाय द ऑपोजिशन ओवर द मणिपुर वायलेंस इश्यू आईएमडी इश्यूज रेड अलर्ट फॉर रेन्स इन तेलंगाना एंड पार्ट्स ऑफ महाराष्ट्र इंक्लूडिंग मुंबई एट एस प्रनॉय एंड लक्ष्य सेन स्टॉम इन टू मैन सिंगल्स क्वार्टर फाइनल ऑफ द जपान ओपन बैडमिंटन एंड इन क्रिकेट इंडिया टेक ऑन वेस्ट इंडीज इन द फर्स्ट ओडीआई एट कैंसिंगटन ओवल इन ब्रिज टाउन बार्बेडॉस दिस इवनिंग मैच बिगिन्स एट सेवन थर्टी पी एम आई एस टी Prime Minister Narendra Modi today inaugurated various development projects in the Seeker district of Rajasthan. Addressing the inaugural ceremony in Seeker, the Prime Minister said that the central government has taken decisions in the interest of farmers for 9 years and created new arrangements from seed to market for them. Mr Modi said his government is working to organize every facility in the villages of India which is available in the cities. Aise kitne hi kaam aaj desh mein ho rahe hain jinse kisanon ke jeevan mein bahut bada badlav aa raha hai. Bharat ka vikas tabhi ho sakta hai jab Bharat ke gaavon ka vikas ho. Bharat vikshit bhi tabhi ban sakta hai jab Bharat ke gaav vikshit ho. इसलिए आज हमारी सरकार भारत के गांवों में हर वो सुविधा पहुंचाने का काम कर रही है जो शहरों में मिला करती है। द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेट टुडे द कंट्रीज फार्मर्स हैव रिसीव्ड 18,000 थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज अंडर द पीएम किसान समृद्धि एंड वन लाख ट्वेंटी फाइव किसान समृद्धि केंद्र हैव स्टार्टेड इन द कंट्री आज यहां से देश के करोड़ों किसानों को पीएम किसान सम्मान निधि के लगभग अठारह हजार करोड़ रुपए भेजे गए हैं सीधे उनके बैंक खाते में जमा हुए हैं आज देश में सवा लाख पीएम किसान समृद्धि केंद्रों की शुरुआत की गई है गांव और ब्लॉक लेवल पर बने इन पीएम किसान समृद्धि केंद्रों से करोड़ों किसानों को सीधा लाभ होगा The Prime Minister said an open network for digital commerce has also started for the farmers. आज डेढ़ हजार से ज्यादा एफ पी ओ के लिए हमारे किसानों के लिए ओपन नेटवर्क फॉर डिजिटल कॉमर्स यानी ओ एन डी सी का लोकार्पण भी हुआ है इससे देश के किसी भी कोने में बैठे किसान के लिए अपनी उपज बाजार तक पहुंचाना और आसान हो जाएगा द प्राइम मिनिस्टर विल बी ऑन अ टू डे विजिट टू गुजरात फ्रॉम टूडे ड्यूरिंग हिस्स स्टे मिस्टर मोदी विल इनोग्यूरेट एंड ले द फाउंडेशन स्टोन फॉर वेरियस प्रोजेक्ट्स वर्थ ओवर टू थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज एट राजकोट ही विल डेडिकेट द न्यूली बिल्ड ग्रीन फील्ड एयरपोर्ट नियर राजकोट टू द नेशन दिस आफ्टरनून आर कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट हैज मोर डिटेल्स The Greenfield Airport at Hirasar has a 45 meter wide runway which can park 14 planes at any point. The passenger terminal at the airport can manage more than 1200 travelers per hour. The Greenfield Airport is equipped with solar power system, green belt and rainwater harvesting system. The airport's gallery provides a glimpse of Gujarat's rich culture and heritage. The air connectivity to the international market will boost industrial growth in the region, especially benefit the ceramic industry in Morbi and will generate employment opportunities. In the region Aparna Khun Akashvani News Ahmedabad Home Minister Amit Shah will launch a unique initiative Mera Gaon Meri Dharohar as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav in New Delhi today It is a pan India initiative of the Ministry of Culture under National Mission on Cultural Mapping Mr Shah will officially launch the virtual platform during a grand projection mapping show at the Qutub Minar The virtual platform www.mgmd.gov.in will connect people with villages of India. Our correspondent reports that the program also includes a sambad between people from different villages and Mr Shah offering a unique opportunity to interact with the heart and soul of India's villages.
Agriculture Ministry has initiated Mera Gaon Meri Dharohar project under national mission on cultural mapping in coordination with Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. The main objective of the project is to culturally map India's 6.5 lakh villages spanning 29 states and 7 union territories on a comprehensive virtual platform. This comprehensive portal will showcase essential information about each village including its geographical location, description of traditional dresses, arts and crafts, temples, fairs, festivals and much more. With Dipendra Kumar, Suparna Saikya, Akashwani News, Delhi. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said that the government will consider the production linked incentive PLI for the chemicals and petrochemicals sector to make India a manufacturing hub. Addressing the third edition of the summit on global chemicals and petrochemicals manufacturing hubs in New Delhi, Ms. Sitaraman said the existing size of this sector will have a major impact on the economy as it has 80,000 products in the market. For a future industry, for a tomorrow industry, you're not going to be dependent on fossil fuel. You need to have a correct basket of balance. Otherwise, this goal for India cannot be achieved. You will not be contributing to it. Now, about the PLI, quite a lot has been said. We are in favor of having India becoming a manufacturing hub, and therefore, of course, we'll consider the PLI also for the chemicals and petrochemicals. The minister said the world is looking towards India for alternative investment destinations because it has a large domestic market. The PLI schemes have led to a significant increase in production, employment generation and exports in the country. Ms. Sitaraman said India has set a target to become energy independent by 2047 and achieve net zero by 2070. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the Midday News. Union Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi has opined that the opposition is divided on the no confidence motion moved by the Congress party in Lok Sabha. Speaking to media outside Parliament House today, he said that the developments after moving the motion showed that there is no consensus among them. He emphasized that the government is confident of defeating the motion as was done in 2018. Speaking on the issue of Manipur raised by the opposition members he said home minister Amit Shah camped in Manipur for 3 days to review the situation and is constantly monitoring it Both houses of parliament were adjourned till 2 pm today following opposition uproar over the Manipur violence issue When the Lok Sabha met for the day opposition members from the Congress TMC DMK JDU and others trooped into the well demanding Prime Minister Narendra Modi's statement on the Manipur issue Speaker Om Birla asked the protesting members to maintain decorum in the house but agitating members did not pay heed opposition members were seen wearing black attire amid ruckus the speaker tried to run the questionnaire but in vain similar scene was witnessed in the rajya sabha when the house met after the first adjournment at 12 noon the scene was no different as chairman jagdeep thankar followed allowed leader of opposition mallikarjun kharge to speak treasury bench members started sloganeering this forced the adjournment of the house till 2 pm Earlier when the house met for the day opposition members from the Congress TMC and others started sloganeering over the Manipur issue amid the din external affairs minister dr s j shankar made a statement about foreign policy engagement of the country the opposition members continued with their protest The external affairs minister Dr S J Shankar today criticized the opposition for ruckus in the Rajya Sabha when he was making a statement on the latest development in India's foreign policy talking to media outside parliament he said he wanted to inform the house of the developments made in the past months but the opposition was not ready to listen he added that it seemed that they did they wanted to criticize every achievement of the country Rajya Sabha Chairman Jagdeep Dhankar today chaired a meeting of the Business Advisory Committee in Parliament House. The meeting was attended by Deputy Chairman Hari Vansh, Leader of the House Piyush Goyal, Tiruchi Siva of TMK, V Vijay Sai Reddy of YSR and others participated in the meeting. Union Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas Hardeep Singh Puri has informed that there is no shortage of coal in the country. In his written reply in Lok Sabha today, he informed that all India coal production during 2022-23 was over 893 million tons, registering a growth of about 14.77% over last year. The adoption of a five-pronged strategy by the ministry is reducing import dependency on hydrocarbons. The ministry is making efforts to increase domestic production, 
adopt biofuels and renewables, adopt energy efficiency norms and improve the refinery processes and demand substitution. The Resource Efficiency and Circular Economy Industry Coalition, RECEIC, is set to be launched this evening at the side event during the 4th Environment and Climate Sustainability Working Group and Environment and Climate Ministers Meeting in Chennai. Conceptualized under India's G20 Presidency, the coalition is an industry-driven initiative aimed at promoting resource efficiency and circular economy practices globally. The coalition is envisioned to be a self-sustaining entity that will continue to operate beyond India's G20 presidency, making a lasting impact on environmental sustainability. 39 companies headquartered in 11 different countries have joined the coalition as its founding members. Incessant rain has battered normal life in several parts of the country. India Met Department has issued red alert for rain in Telangana and parts of Maharashtra, including Mumbai. In Telangana's incessant ra heavy rains continue to lash several parts of the state. River Godavari is flowing above the mark of second danger level, while the Krishna River is in spate. Our correspondent reports that the State Chief Secretary Shanta Kumari has appointed special officers to six most affected districts to oversee the rescue and relief operations. The normal life at many places across Telangana state has been severely affected due to incessant heavy rains. Crush gates of many projects across River Godavari and Krishna have been opened to release flood water downstream as very heavy inflows are reaching the reservoirs. The state authorities are making all out efforts to make the losses minimum and ensure no loss of life. Reports are being poured in about overflowing streams getting cutting off dozens of villages from the rest of the state due to flood water flowing over national highways. Special officers have been sent to six districts to monitor the relief measures at the ground level. Lakshmi, Akashwani News, Hyderabad. Talking to Akashwani News, Director General of IMD, Mrityunjay Mohapatra said that heavy rains will occur in Telangana and other areas. और ये एक लो प्रेशर एरिया साउथ ओडिशा और एडजाइनिंग कोस्टल आंध्र प्रदेश के ऊपर केंद्रित होते हैं और इसके प्रभाव में आज और कल हैवी टू एक्सट्रीमली हैवी रेनफॉल हो सकता है तेलंगाना रिजर्व साउथ स्केट और एडजाइनिंग साउथ ओडिशा में 29 तारीख को झारखंड और एडजाइनिंग एंड वेस्ट बंगाल के आसपास पहुंचने का संभावना है इसके प्रभाव में उन्तीस तारीख से इकतीस तारीख तक ईस्टर्न इंडिया में जैसे की बिहार झारखंड एंड वेस्ट बंगाल ओडिशा और एडजाइनिंग एरियाज में रेनफॉल एक्टिविटी बढ़ेगा और वहाँ हैवी टू वेरी हेवी रेनफॉल होने का संभावना है इंटेंस रेनफॉल एक्टिविटी अभी पेनफॉल ऑफ इंडिया में चल रहा है वो दो दिन बाद रिड्यूस होगा Mumbai has also recorded its wettest July amid heavy rainfall. The Kolaba Observatory recorded extremely heavy rainfall at 223.2 mm. Meanwhile, the University of Mumbai has cancelled all examinations scheduled to be held on Thursday across the city owing to heavy rains. In Niger, a nationwide curfew has been declared and all institutions of the Republic are suspended following a military coup. The soldiers warned against any foreign intervention. They said they will respect President Mohammed Bazoum's well-being. Meanwhile, the United States urged Bazoum's release while the European Union and the United Nations and others have condemned the uprising and said that they are following the events with concern. In badminton, Etis Pranoy today outsmarted his compatriot S. Kidambi in Japan Open, 1921-21-9, 21-9. -9. Earlier, India's Lakshya Sen beat Japan's Kanta Suneyama, 21-14, 21-16. With this, both Pranoy and Sen have advanced to the quarterfinals of the tournament. In men's doubles category, star Indian pair of Satvik Sairaj Ranik Reddy and Chirak Shetty has also stormed into the second round. They defeated the Danish duo of Lazi Mold Hede and Chepe Bay in straight games. In cricket, India will face the West Indies in the first ODI of the three-match series at Kensington Oval, Bridgetown, Barbados this evening. The match will start at 7 p.m. India time. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicates 1,25,000 Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samriddhi Kendras to the nation at Sikar in Rajasthan, says city-like facilities are being organized in villages. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says government will consider production-linked incentive for chemicals and petrochemicals sector to make India a manufacturing hub. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahla Joshi says opposition is divided on no-confidence motion and there is no consensus among them. Both houses of parliament adjourned till 2 p.m. amidst protests by the opposition over the Manipur violence issue. IMD issues red alert for rains in Telangana and parts of Maharashtra including Mumbai. And that is the end of the mid -tenuous. 